Thank you for joining us today on Ford Tech Talks, where we sit down with the drivers behind the future of mobility. I am your host, Greg Amaral, technical recruiter here at Ford. Today, we will give you an inside look into Ford's human-centered design group, D-Ford, whose main call to action entails driving human progress through empathy, creativity, and design. Our guest today is research director of D-Ford's Detroit lab, Michael Thomas. Michael has a passion for making sense of hard puzzles that drive strategy and builds his teams to do the same. His deep knowledge, inspiring leadership, strong anthropology background make him the subject matter expert for today's discussion. Thank you for joining us today, Michael. Yeah, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Michael, you've been with Ford for over eight years and with D Ford since its inception in 2019. Can you explain in your own words what is D Ford and how is D Ford changing the industry? Yeah, yeah, sure thing. So, I mean, D Ford was established specifically with the intent to, to look at things a little bit differently and to look at it from a lot of different perspectives, right? So um, it represents a new way of working. So it was, it was kind of bringing um, this convergence of, of, of two different, um, basically two different things into the domain of, of generating mobility solutions. And the two things that I was gonna talk about were kind of bringing these diversity of perspectives um, we have a, a really interesting uh, cross-functional team, people coming from all different backgrounds to look at problems differently. And then the second part of that is, is to work differently. So um, we're a very, very collaborative team. Um, when we work on projects, yeah. we work on projects together. And, um, and the idea is that, um, that you're not kind of following these, these linear stepwise processes, but rather you're kind of um, approaching things in, in uh, a more holistic way. Right. Sounds like a very different and innovative way of thinking. With that said, as we experience the changes into connectivity, automation, electrification, AI, how is D-Ford tackling these disruptions and bringing in people that are unconventionally, but in an innovative fashion, utilizing human-centered design? Yeah, I mean, that's just it. I mean, so, I mean, you mentioned a lot of different domains, right, that are that are all have um, tremendous, uh, you know, to overuse the word, right, but it's tremendous disruptive potential, right? So you have these these kind of domains of activity, new, new technologies that are kind of all convening at one point. And one of the principles that we, we do is kind of what I was just alluding to was that because it's complex and because there's just a, a lot of unknowns is that we need to really kind of um, have those diverse perspectives. So, you know, one of the ways that we look at, at things like that, and part of the reason that we work so collaboratively is you, we may have a project where you have a, an anthropologist working next to um, a political scientist working next to say a business designer and a, a, a interaction designers and, and prototypers all working on a problem together. So um, we do what we call, we make to learn. And the idea is that kind of through engagement um, and kind of through um, testing, through putting things into the world, it's one of the best ways to learn, right? So one way to tackle some of these problems or these unknowns is, is to, to test them out, try them out, build stuff, break stuff, uh, work together, think through it. Very good. With all those things said, what do you feel is the largest obstacle currently in the automotive industry? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. I think um, if I were to say the largest, I don't know if it's so much the largest obstacle, but it's kind of this um, intractable kind of problem is that there's all these unknowns, right? Is that so much is changing. It's hard to, to find the ground, right? It's, it's almost as if, if every variable that you would um, anchor yourself against is up for grabs. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest challenges. I mean, um, it's opportunity, right, too. So it's another way to frame it. But I think that that's where it is. Some of the fundamental things that you can rely on are uh, a human need to, to get around uh, for mobility. And that's where you just have to ground yourself. You have to ground yourself in, in the human needs because everything else is changing. So that's kind of where we're at. People seem to misunderstand a lot about what it takes to get to the end result. Um, what do you think that the largest misunderstanding is that people have about the auto industry? Yeah, I don't know. I get you. I get you. So um, I think probably the misunderstanding is this, is that um, if you look at what where there's continuity from where, you know, Ford has been in the past and, and where Ford is now, I think that continuity really is all about that story about um, providing mobility. And uh, I think what what tools worked in the past and what approaches work uh, really well and were innovative um, 
you know, there will be new tools and, and new approaches and new methods and things like that that will be uh, needed now. So that's what we're innovating. So I think if you look at it in terms of continuity, it's that human need, it's the provision of mobility, right? But if you look at um, the methods and tools to get there and, and, and who it takes to, um, to, to do the work, um, I think that's where you're gonna see a lot of innovation. So I guess to answer your question, um, I think one of the misunderstandings is that um, that we would be applying like the, um, the, the same models or the same way of thinking about the world. Um, it's just not the case. I mean, you mentioned it already, right? There's so many different variables. I mean, those are some of the technological variables that are, that are changing too, but you can see uh, socially and culturally, um, there's just a lot in flux right now. So I think having that, that continuous mission and what you do is you alter, you know, how do you approach it and, and what tools and methods you use and, and how do you scale those? I think that's where um, that's that's where the advantage is going to be. But anyways, that, I think that's what the misunderstanding is, is that um, it's not going to be the, the same uh, approach. It's not going to be the same tools or the same uh, as before. You know, it's going to be new. Exactly. Ford's known for that innovation. And in comes D Ford. So how does D Ford help to resolve and provide clarity on some of those challenges that you face on a day-to-day product. There's there's one thing that's really powerful is that D Ford has the the remit, the support, and um, it was intentionally created to look at things from a very holistic perspective, but also from very diverse perspectives. So you're looking at the whole picture. You're looking at it from all different angles, right? And um, one of the advantages that we have and, and kind of where, we, where we're placed in, in the organization and, and kind of the, the support that we have is to, is to basically experiment and to, to really look at things differently, take risks and um, have the room to take those risks and then have the right people that are, are providing these perspectives. So I think that's, that's what's really powerful. I mentioned earlier that part of it is the way we work. So part of it is this, this super collaborative environment where um, you're working with people that, you know, otherwise maybe in a different department or in a different organization or whatever, but here they're all sitting in the, in the same room with the same notes and the same model and prototypes, right? And the other bit is that you're, you're pulling people from a lot of different spaces and happy to talk about that as well. But then I think there's that third bit is that, that support and like I said, the remit, the, the, the mission to do it. Yeah, and the mission has changed. People are not aware that Ford Motor Company has made a shift from a manufacturing company to a tech company. How does D Ford fit into that space and help support that? Yeah, again, it, it goes with um, really being intentional about about like who's at the table and who you're bringing in and, and and who needs to be there, right? So, like I said, I mean, we have we draw people from from everywhere. We draw people from academia, tremendous diversity of experience. And it's, like I said, it's, it's really kind of this experimental approach that is, is kind of shifting a mindset. And it's shifting a mindset from kind of a linear, like assembly line manufacturing kind of, to kind of a more um, uh, iterative and a more flexible and adaptive kind of technology approach. Um, and, and this stuff has already happened, right? We're already kind of uh, making these changes. And I mean, we're, we're getting up to speed now. So we have our, we're at, you know, we're at capacity. We're doing it. So, um, you bring up mindset. Looking back to the very beginning, we've always emphasized a forward-thinking mindset and the way it's revolutionized the auto industry. Can you talk about the way Ford's continuing to evolve and the way we are continuing to shape the future? We walk the walk, right? So, if you look at the things that we're doing in the electrification space and the autonomous space, I mean, I think the evidence is right there. I mean, it's right. if you look at what we're doing with even the Michigan Central Station and kind of the plan for that. It's, it's, it's the, the, the right people on, on, the, on the job um, with, the, with the processes that really just allow us to, to take risks, to experiment and, and to do something different. Right, you brought up amazing things like Michigan Central Station. What are the things that excite you the most about Ford and D Ford as well? Yeah, I mean, my personal, what I, what I get out of it is just being able to work on, uh, on projects with um, colleagues who just have completely different backgrounds, a completely different way of thinking than mine. I mean, I come from from anthropology, right? Um, but I mean, I might be working with someone who's, um, you know, like I said, someone who's uh, coming from information sciences or someone who is doing, uh, you know, interaction design and things like this. And it's just it's just uh, it's brilliant. So that's that's kind of what I really look forward to kind of on the day to day. 
Um, in terms of the industry overall, I mean, the, it, it, it almost, it, at some point it almost feels like a little bit obvious, like the, the, it's going to, there's going to be a radical transformation. I mean, if you look at what's um, the convergence of things like uh, autonomous vehicles and new types of ownership models, and you look at um, uh, electrification and what uh, the changes that are happening in infrastructure, I mean, it, you can see where it's going. And um, I, I just think it's going to be awesome. It, it'll be some, it'll just be a new way of life, which will be neat. It is truly exciting. And, um, inspiring as well that you've been able to bring these amazing group of people together to achieve something and you know keep forward as the leader and um, in the forefront now we're going to move on to something that uh, i'm very excited to bring you which is this month's tech talk q a where we ask those probing questions from listeners for this month's d ford speaker michael thomas michael what qualities do you look for in somebody who's joining your team yeah that's a good question um you know it's it's interesting because I, I mentioned we look for um, we draw people from from all different um, backgrounds, right? But there are probably some common things that we that we look for that are just super um, they're just crucial. We we need to have it, right? Part of it is being a storyteller, so that's something that I think is just super important for us. I mean, people on the team talk about it as as a, a, a superpower that we just you just gotta have. <laughs> and part of it is I mean that's how that's I mean that's how um, in a lot of ways uh, human cognition is, is narrative structured by narrative, right? Not reducible to that, but that's a, that's a huge part of it. And part of kind of being able to empathize um, with the people for whom you're designing and to understand their context is being able to, to tell those stories. And um, and I think tell the story about of the the what you're doing, why it matters, and 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 why you should believe it. That's important. The other bit is we talk about like making to learn, right? So the idea here is that. Um, you know, it's great we can exist in, the, in a world of abstractions and, and things like that, but there's no better way than to just put your, put your stuff out there, test it, see if it breaks, see if it falls apart, and learn from it. So that's something that we, that, you know, everyone everyone does in, in different ways, right? You don't have to be an expert in, in a particular um, uh, thing to be able to, to make an experiment or to test your ideas or anything like that. Um, so that's something that we look for kind of in everybody. And then the last bit is, I know uh, critical thinking is just absolutely uh, important, is to be able to, to look at something with kind of a, a keen eye and um, really be able to like critically assess it and, and understand like, well, what are we really asking here? What are we really after? So to my mind, there's more, right? There's, there's more things we do, yeah. you know, but um, I think those are the things at least I, I really look for. Sure. We had another question. What makes a design researcher successful at D Ford? Yeah, I think a um, couple things. I think um, like being really collegial is is just a great community, right? I mean, we all come from different backgrounds. We all have uh, different expertise and, and things like that. And I think for someone to really excel is to be able to to work well in an environment where you're going to hear some different perspectives. You know, it's not going to be this like uh, stepwise model where it's your turn to do the thing and you'll do the thing <laughs> and pass it on to the next person, right? Um, so I think, you know, being open and uh, collaborative is just really critical to success. I think that's probably one of the, the key things in our group. Outstanding. And when you think of tools in the past, you always see commercials of automated arms coming in, installing doors and stuff. That might be different from what you guys do. Can you explain to me and the audience in general, what tools do you guys use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, listen, uh, um, Having some of those automated arms would be pretty cool. I have, I, uh, but <laughs> what we typically do is, I mean, I'll use the example of making to learn. So, you know, a lot of times when we're kind of like testing out ideas, we're going to do some pretty low fidelity stuff. So this might be, I mean, like paper models that we just kind of sketch out and have like a almost like flip book. You could do stuff like that. Foam core, interior environments, um, you know, digital applications, you know, the, it can vary. I mean, I've seen projects where people are building things out of Legos to convey, you know, um, a service experience. I mean, I've seen, uh, like I said, whatever tools get the job done. So, and, and it doesn't have to be really high fidelity because I mean, remember, here's where we're at is that all this stuff is, is going to be new. So you might have a pretty wild idea and you're like, well, you know, no one's going to buy this. So let's, let's just test it out. Let's just think around it. So we, we build something, like I said, you build it, you break it, you rebuild it. Um, 
And I, I, so I think the tools that we use are pretty diverse, right? It's going to be like whatever you're comfortable with. We have people who are prototypers that like maybe it's some kind of coding. I'm not a coder or anything like that, but that's their domain. So they're like, I'm going to build something and it looks like code. I'm like, okay, that's great. I don't know how to do that. But now I might want to build something and say, you know what? I think um, what would be really interesting here is this uh, kind of activity. So we did a research activity that was like we built a game. It was basically like a board game that we played with people to understand like how they were thinking about autonomous futures, different types of scenarios and things like that. It was cool. It had little cards and, and, and it had like a, a, a map and everything. And it was a way for people to think about problems in a way that was not necessarily a technical way, because a lot of the questions in the autonomous domain can be pretty technical. But we wanted to kind of put like the, the what are the implications in kind of a more human centered way. So that was something we built. It was basically a game to, to get people to think a little bit differently and to talk through um like trade-offs and talk through the aspirations and things like that. So like I said, the tools are going to be really diverse um, depending on what you're comfortable using as long as it gets the job done. Yeah, it sounds like it's an absolute blast. Being uh, that D Ford is so innovative, how does D Ford collaborate with all of the other teams at Ford? So when, when D Ford was, um, when it was structured, that was a very intentional um, part of the structure. Because, it, I mean, as you can imagine, right, that's that'll make or break you if you can't integrate with, you know, um, like people who are like hardcore engineering or, or in marketing and all that. If you can't speak their language or you can't feed into their process. So we have a couple of different ways of doing it. I mean, one of the ways we have a brilliant team that we I mean, we call them the activators, the activation team. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. And like their job is to like bridge that gap. And they have to have a foot in both worlds, right? They have to understand, like, okay, how does the, the big machine work to actually get stuff out at scale? But then <laughs> what does it mean when we're doing these, like, kind of wild experiments in the lab? And how do we connect that? So I think, I mean, that's just, that's that's structurally um, a really good way to do it. Another way we do it, too, is that we don't, like, you don't pass stuff off, right? You don't just, like, like hand over the specs or hand over the um, design brief and say, all right, best of luck with that. Right. So we have teams that are integrated all through the process. So you're going to have people who are on your team going into the research, you know, building out some of these models who are also going to be sitting with the team as it goes through the, the stream. Right. So right. I think there's uh, there's like I said, it's just a very intentional way of setting up the org to do that. One thing that I get a lot is being a technical recruiter on paper. You can't give people a general idea of how exciting and diverse and innovative it is to be on your team. Can you give myself as well as the listeners an idea of what it is like to be a day in the life of a research designer? Yeah. You know, know, it's funny because I I actually get this question more often than you'd think. Because every time I talk to someone like, you know, I'm trying to uh, communicate about what we do because it's kind of cool stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, If you're like, well, what's a day in the life like? And, this is going to sound so cliche, it's sad, but there's no normal day, right? So it kind of depends. I mean, there's parts where you're going to be, where you understand like, okay, I know what field work is, right? So there's going to be a day where, you know, we had someone recently that went and, and basically like hung out in a mine to understand about mining. Or we have people that go out into the world and say, you know what, I want to understand about, you know, uh, these uh, wild art installation because I want to learn about how is self-expression changing. So um, so you might be in the field and you might be doing these kind of uh, experiences that you're going to bring back and, and kind of inspire the team with. Um, or you might be in the lab. You might be in the prototyping lab. You might be, you know, sawing pieces of wood and, and bolting them together to kind of test out a, a new idea for, um, you know, some kind of uh, environment. Um, you might be working with a team and like, you know, we do a lot of like, um, whiteboarding and um, kind of um, making a mess of the room to think through stuff. <laughs> uh, that's probably your typical day. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. It, it's diverse. You're, you're going to have a lot of different things. I mean, you're going to have your, your, your meetings too, where it's like, like let's get together and, and, and scope a project and you kind of convene and, and, and think through the problems. And then you all, you know, you might be taking prototypes out into the world. I mean, I've had, projects where um, we built like autonomous vehicles and went and just piloted services and said, let's just see what happens when you do it. So it sounds amazing and um, you know, like a dream for most people, but definitely not your common nine to five. No. Um, yeah. 
Thank you for answering those questions. And thank you for all of the people out there who submitted the questions for this month's Tech Talk Q&A. Join us on LinkedIn to find out who will be joining us next month for, for Tech Talk. And don't forget to submit your questions on LinkedIn for a chance to learn from Ford Tech leaders and become a driver behind the future of mobility. Uh, Michael, there's a lot of buzz about what Ford has planned. Uh, you probably knew this was coming. Anything that you can share with us? Oh, of course not, right? <laughs> no, 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 I will say this. Um, no, anything that is um, some of the most exciting stuff is the most secret stuff. But I will say this, you know, kind of, you can see what's out there, like I said, in the electrification space. I think in particular is one of the most exciting, I think. Um, and I think that's where I'd be looking. If I wanted to see, you know, where we headed, you know, read those leaves and I think you'll, you'll, you'll get it. Excellent. And I promise this is my last question, but uh, can you give me an example of something that has surprised you that you've uncovered in your research? I was on a project recently where we had kind of, uh, the team had kind of um, uh, structured the research and kind of like, okay, we're gonna go on, we're gonna discover this, this thing in the world. I don't wanna tell you what it is because then you'll, you'll, you'll spoil the surprise when it comes right. out. But I'll tell you what, and it happens more often than you think, is some of our fundamental assumptions um, were completely overturned when we went out and, and, and just met with people and, and, and stayed with them in kind of this ethnographic context and really see the holistic um, uh, way that, that mobility works in their lives beyond something you would just get in a narrow window, but when you look at their whole life. And so we had this, uh, this project where we were just immersed in these kind of uh, contacts with our commercial customers, and, um, but in their whole life, not just, not just on the job, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it, what we learned there kind of really fundamentally shifted kind of how we frame some of the work and how we think about what, um, what values that we understand and, and what is motivating some, uh, some of our customers. And um, it, it was a pretty radical shift. Sorry that I can't say what it actually was, <laughs> um, but I, I mean, there's a lot of work that, that it sparked. So, it, and, and I think this happened, like I said, it happens more often than you think, but you think you, you think you have an open-ended project. You think it's framed in such a way that you're not taking, um, uh, you're not preloading any of your constructs too heavily. And then you go out into the world and, and you realize, wow, um, this whole structure is in question. Let's change it up. Let's think about it differently. Well, I definitely know that I am excited and I'm sure that uh, a lot of the listeners will be too. And that uh, can't wait to figure out what that surprise is. And yeah, <laughs> well, keep an eye out. Look at the commercial space. I mentioned electrification, but um, you know, keep your eye out. It's there's some cool stuff coming. Very good, very good, Michael. I cannot thank you enough for joining us today and giving us an insight into the way that D Ford's fostering innovation through human-centered design and its future forward vision and everything that you've achieved with D Ford since you've started with them. Um, I cannot thank you enough, and uh, you've been a wonderful guest. No problem. Appreciate it. Again, thanks to Michael. And to learn more about careers at D Ford and the way they think about the future of mobility, please visit www.d.ford.com. Again, that's www.d.ford.com. If interested in additional opportunities to join the Ford family or to stay up to date on Ford Tech Talks, be sure to follow us on LinkedIn at Ford Motor Company. Thank you for joining us and we will see you next time.